Buyer's Guide is brought to you by Change Cars, the platform where only manufacturer approved dealers are allowed to advertise. Visit changecars.co.za and see why there is simply no better platform available. This week on Buyer's Guide, used diesel sedans from BMW come under the spotlight. The VW Tiguan goes up against rivals from Mazda and Kia. And would a Nissan Magna make a good replacement for a Toyota CHR? Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Buyer's Guide, the show where we help you, our viewers, to solve some of the toughest automotive problems. If you have a question for the team, you can send it to buyersguide at ignitiontv.co.za. And remember to give us as much information as possible, including a clear photograph of yourself. Joining us in studio this week are two familiar faces on Buyer's Guide, Thomas Falconer from the Sunday Times and Bradley Scorer from Arnold Chat Cars. Guys, once again, good yeah. to have you back again. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. It's great to have you here. We're going to kick off things with a question from Evans, who is 33 years old, currently drives a Suzuki Alta. With two growing daughters, his family has outgrown the Alta and is keen to get into a used BMW sedan, either an E60 530D or an E90 320D, all around the 100,000 Rand mark. The Suzuki will stay around for driving around town, while the BMW will be used for traveling from Johannesburg to Durban three or four times a year. Would this be a good buy, Bradley? Um, I don't think so, especially that price bracket. I think you're going to be buying a, a packet of trouble. Um, and those cars are expensive to maintain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really don't think it's a good idea. Especially in that price bracket. 100,000 Rand 320D mm. um, <coughs> or a 530D. Obviously, the 530D is going to be a hell of a lot more mileage. The 320D is most probably the one that fit in there. It's most probably going to be close on the 200,000 Rand mark, Thomas. Would you like to drive your family on a car like that down to Durban three or four times a year? Definitely not. I you think need the AA. Yeah, you would. Yeah. I'd rather <laughs> just fly. You know, yeah. I mean, it'd be yeah. cheaper. It would Invest be cheaper. the money and fly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I think it's a terrible idea. At that price point, you're going to get an absolute lemon of a car. Um, it's not worth the cash. I think they should just squeeze into the Suzuki Alto and just keep it for now. Yes, the Alto is a good car. Yes. It, it's just got a small. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe you must look for a Corolla or something like that. Yeah. You know, I think you should stay with the brand. Yeah. Well get yourself a Suzuki Swift or a yeah. the Lingo. Or what Berlin. about? What about? Here's what I'm just thinking out of my, you know. Um, he wants like a... Bit more space. One's like a, a luxury sedan. Yeah. What about a um, a one five nine? Yeah, um, if you can find one five hundred grand, I think you're going to be in the same sort of ballpark yeah. as, as the as BMW. BMW. I think <laughs> they're going to be high mileage, probably not yeah. in good condition, so like that. So I mean, it's, it's nice car, but yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to buy one either. <laughs> what you just got to remember, yeah. I suppose, for our viewers is that when you're buying a hundred thousand rand BMW, Alfa, Mercedes, Audi, whatever, those cars were all four or five hundred thousand when they were new. They've now depreciated to 100,000 Rand. Why? There's a reason why. Because the maintenance costs are so high. So for 100,000 Rand, I would say you go out and rather buy yourself, you could get yourself a, a good 1800 uh, Honda Civic. Mm. It's going to be a bit more spacious. It'll be bulletproof reliable. You can quite happily drive down to uh, Durban in it. Great fuel consumption on those cars. And because it's, it's a Honda Civic, it's not that popular. The resale value on them aren't that great. And you'll get one with you know, 100,000 Ks on it. And it'll have all the bells and whistles in it that, that you'd find in a, something like a BMW 320D without the headaches. Because mm. yeah. like we've mentioned on many shows, if you've only got 100 grand to spend, you ain't got lots of money lying around to do the maintenance and stuff. You know which is even what's even scarier. Yeah. You're looking at the Audi A4 with this. Two liter TDI. With, yeah. yeah. with the same yeah. kind of mileage. problem, yeah. With the same kind of mileage. Any of those cars, if a gearbox fails, an example, you're talking 40, 50,000 Rand. Yeah. So rather go and look at uh, something else that's, you know, proven reliability. Uh, even a Corolla, if you can get 100,000 Rand, like a Corolla Quest or something like that. Yeah. But then again, it's going to also be higher mileage, you know. I, I think mileage, yeah. in that sort of segment, you know, over the years, I think the Civic's really a good buy. I uh, mentioned before, Kia Serato, also very good. And uh, Hyundai Elantris, also very good in that sort of segment. And those sedan cars have sort of mm. lost the flavor of the month. Yeah. So they, you know, everybody wants hatchbacks or SUVs. So if you want a sedan, I think those are really good cars to have a look at that are good, reliable, cheap to maintain. So you can fix them yourself, you know. Suzuki yeah. Kazashi as well. That's Kazashi, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you can find a Kazashi. If you can yeah. find one. Yeah. The problem with that is 
back up in spares afterwards, you know, because they, they had, didn't have too many of them around. You know, it's difficult to find bits and pieces. Anyway, that's our suggestion. Move on. Thank you, sir. Right, we <laughs> turn our attention now from family sedans to something with a bit more oomph. Tabisa has a budget of 800,000 Rand and is in the market for a used premium hot hatch. His shortlist includes the Audi RS3, Mercedes AMG A45, and the VW Golf R. But he's open to other suggestions as well. Thomas, you're the fast and furious guy here. Am I? <laughs> um, look, none of those cars really do it for me, so I'm suggesting look at fifth generation uh, Honda Civic Type R. Mm. You'll get one for 800,000, low mileage. That's the new one with the big wing on the back and yeah. the turbo motor. Yeah. Yes. Small, smaller wing than the previous one. Yes. But still has a wing. Great car. P probably one of the best front wheel drive cars I've ever had on test. It's amazing. Uh, and then you could also look at uh, Toyota GR Yaris if you want something special. Well, that's a good idea because um, that's, that's like very, very niche and, 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 and the latest tech and everything. Very niche, latest tech, all-wheel drive, um, and you could get a, um, the Rally, which is a high-spec one in the 700s. And if you don't want the Rally, you'd be lo looking in the 600s. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. It's a special car. It was built to go rallying and never did. So it kind of has like a nice backstory to it as well. Yeah, I mean, all those cars he's chosen, Bradley, yeah. they all lack a car They all lack drive. a car. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they're all really good cars. Um, again, it's about preference. I mean, the Honda's a good suggestion, too. Mm. Um, you know, there's just so much. And the 800 mark, I mean, you I mean, you could even get a used Julia 2-litre. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is also quite a sporty car. You could get so many different cars in that sort of price bracket. You know, I um, looked at the uh, i30N. The oh, yeah. 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 And I thought, there's a different car. That's Completely a good car. Completely different car. That's a yeah. nice car. I forgot about that. Yeah. You see, that's the thing. You, you forgot about it because, I mean, they didn't bring out a lot of mm. them. And, and it hasn't got the hype, that the, the marketing hype, I think, behind it that the other cars mm. have. Yeah. And the performance of that is right up there with the Golf R, Easily. Focus RS, you yes. know, that kind of a thing as well. Yeah. To have a look at. I mean, the hot hatches are always uh, contentious because you're either an Audi fan or VW yeah. fan or whatever. And people, you know, those are the sort of halo cars. And they forget about there's a whole bunch of others which are, quite frankly, better. Yeah, I yes. agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's final choice. What would you go for, Toyota? I'd go for GI Yaris and save some cash. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, I'd probably take the Audi, the Iris. Uh, yeah. I three. It's a lot of I fun to drive. I quite like your uh, Honda Civic because I'm a big Honda fan, as you know. Uh, I'll, I'll go with the i30N. I, yeah, it's a, a great car. Completely yeah. different. It giving all the other cars a bit of a hiding. I can like it. And it all those lovely blue colour, yes. which is the same as the frames on your glasses. Yeah, yeah that's the only reason I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In, in fact, maybe you got those on the launch. <laughs> <laughs> Freebies. <laughs> okay, we're going to be taking a short break, but when we return. We compare three of the top contenders in the compact SUV segment. And the Kia Optima battles it out with sedan rivals from Mazda and VW. Change cars. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa. Welcome back to Buyer's Guide. Brilliant is a 35-year-old from Ranfontein, and like many South Africans, he's keen to get into a compact SUV. He can spend between 500,000 and 600,000 Rand, and he's given us three very attractive options. The Kia Seltos, Mazda CX-30, and VW Tiguan. The vehicle will be used to drive to work and back every day, with two or three long trips throughout the year. And he plans to keep the car for eight years. Gentlemen, are those good options? Not? Yeah. Something else you want to suggest, They're all Bradley? good options. Mm. I mean, I would maybe look at the Vol H6. Um, you can get the top of the range on, beautifully specced. It's got everything it opens and closes. Um, but I mean, again, there's a lot of choice in that sort of price bracket. Yeah. Um, and there's and heavy spec on that 8.6, eh? Yes, yeah. It's spec to the hilt. There's nothing you need to put. Yeah, yeah. No, they, the they do come out. That is an option. Thomas, out of those bunches there? Yeah, uh, I'd probably go with the Mazda. I uh, love the look of I it. I like the styling of it. Nice yeah. to drive. Yeah. Um, so that would be my choice out of what he's put on the table. Yeah. If it was only those cars, I would agree with you, mm. the Mazda CX-30, because it's so underrated. It's yeah. a beautiful looking car. It's got a great backup. You know, it's proven reliability. But if you want real good value for money, you mentioned the H6. If you want a spacious car, recently drove the new Cherry Tigo 8. It is yeah. incredible. Also a very nice car. You know, it is well worth yourself going to a dealership and have a look. Because there, it's like you know when you go and buy that first class ticket and you're going to fly to London? Well, you'd know, Bradley. The rest of us Yeah, know. we don't know. Yes. But <laughs> yeah. you get that first class ticket, but you pay an economy price for it. Yes. 
That is what the Terry Tigo does. It so gives you the absolute luxury, and it really is phenomenal. It's very good build quality. For, everything. For, um, from 496,000 rand, I think it is. It is an absolute bargain of the century. Now, unfortunately, I have to agree with him yeah. because I sat in the car when you yeah. had it on test. It is, it is an vehicle. impressive, yeah. awesome vehicle. And also, if you want to keep the car for eight years, that thing comes with an unlimited mileage. Well, it's got million, a 10 year, million yeah. kilometer warranty on the engine, yeah. and a five year, 150,000 kilometer warranty on the rest of it, and it's got its service plan. Anyway. Well worth a look at. Obviously, the elephant in the room is how long do they last? Will they stay together? We'll come back to that question in five years' time. But the present time is well worth looking at. Go and have a look. If you don't like that, go buy a CX30. Thomas is right. And now, Back to sedans. Clinton is 29, who owns a Fiat Sienna 1.6. Bradley, you remember those cars? Yeah, it's a nice old car. I think they were there though, before eh? you <laughs> were born. He's been driving it for six years. He's got a budget now of 210,000 Rand and would like to get into something newer, either a Polo sedan, Mazda 3, or Kia Optima. His daily kilometers he drives is 138, and his top priorities are space, practicality, reliability, safety, and comfort. I suppose that's what everybody wants. He will be keeping the car for about the next five years. Bradley, what would you chuck in there? Nice yeah. budget, 210. You yeah, I mean, new. again, you've got so much option. Yeah. Um, I like all the cars that he's chosen. Um, so, I th yeah, I think he's going down the, sa the right route, in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, he does put quite a bit of mileage on his car, though, yeah. at 138 mm -hmm. k a day. So, um, definitely you must buy a second-hand one and then just sort of try and manage it a bit. But, yeah, I think any of those choices that he's got there are, are good. Thomas? So for me, I would I'd go with the Mazda 3 yeah. because it's, it's the car that, l that looks least like an Uber car. It's got a little bit of like styling panache going for it. Um, and you could get, um, uh, you know, for like 212,000, I saw one uh, with 51,000 Ks on the clock from a Mazda dealer. That's 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 yeah. a good bargain, that. Yeah. Because um, I mean, buying from a dealer, two ten, you go there with two ten, you'll get it. You know? Yeah, you know <laughs> what I mean. And so buying from a dealer gives you all that um, backup, backup, and yeah, the peace of mind, safety yeah. and yeah. peace of mind. Yeah. And it's a good platform, you know. I mean, it's a car. I mean, it, it, it may be a bit boring, but at least it, it kind of handles better than the others do in that segment. What's yeah. the? I'm just trying to remember. I, I just popped into my brain now. Suzuki mm. Bellino or the Starlet. You could most probably buy that brand new around that price. Yeah. Is it around 210, yeah. 230, somewhere around there, yeah. if I remember correctly? But if you bought the Bellino, yeah. it's the same car, but it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even if yeah. you go like buy a, a one year old Starlet or Bellino, mm. you'll pick it up in there. And there you're getting, a, now you're getting a very low mileage car that will come with all the warranties and everything. Mm. You're going to get all the backup, and it's going to have like less than 20,000 Ks on it. Yeah. Something to look at, but also back to the Mazdas. I mean, we know Mazdas are very much like Toyotas. You know, it's a no-brainer. Mazdas, Toyotas, Hondas. So, Adam, what would you take from your choice? I'd buy the Mazda 3, I think. Bradley? Yeah. Yeah, I think the Mazda 3 is a very good choice. Huh? Well, I would love to have an Optima. Hey? Seriously. It's the just the Optima, such a yeah. different car. Six or seven years old, and the mileage is going to be 100,000. I would, I would yeah. still, I mean, personally, I like the Optima. Yeah. I like the Optima, but your yours is more for practical. Your like the choice of the Mazda is more practical choice 140 than Ks uh, one with heart. 140 yeah. Ks a day. It's is quite a bit of mileage over a month. Yeah. You know, yeah. So he's going to pile up that mileage quickly, so it's better to get something with low mileage now and then build yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. So Mesa 3, guys. Mesa 3. Yes. There we Here go. We got. Do it. Oh. Don't go away because after the break, we advise a viewer who would like to trade his Toyota CHR for a Nissan Magnite. And when can you expect costly repairs on an older model Mazda 2? Change cars. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa. Thank you for tuning into Buyer's Guide. Nolan owns a Toyota CHR, and because he does 650 kilometers per week, he's put 40,000 k's on the clock in a relatively short space of time. He can spend up to 4,000 rand a month, and he's thinking of swapping the Toyota for a Nissan Magnite. Would this be a good decision, Bradley? Collectively, guys? No. No. <laughs> no. No, definitely not. I mean, the, the Toyota, especially with that sort of mileage generation, is the right car to have. Um, there's no value in buying a new car, in my mind, with that sort of mileage collection. When he's got a Toyota, that should be able to handle the mileage yeah. um, in the short periods that he's doing it. So I think it's quite an easy one. Don't do anything. Just keep your car. 100%. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's just a bizarre question. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like going from Margot Robbie to Theresa May. Like, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, I, I don't know who they <laughs> are, but whoever, whoever they are. It's a bit like saying, well, you know. It's Thomas's dates yeah. on uh, <laughs> that show he was if on. You wanted to, if you wanted to say, look, I want to trade it up to a RAV4, you'd say, fine, you're trading up. But you, you got a Toyota CHR, and Toyota's a good, reliable car. So it'll, it'll outlive oh. the new Magnite. Keep it. Don't buy the Magnite. Move Why? on. Why? I mean, why would he? Uh, we're and he'd be very disappointed, I think. I think it's like COVID fever. He's been chilling at home for too long. Yes. Not yeah. thinking straight. Cabin COVID fever. Yeah. Yeah. Cabin COVID fever. Thinking like, I need to get a new car. What should I, oh, this looks good. Yeah. yeah. This. It does look good, the Magnite. Uh, but I must admit, Nice from far, but far nice from, from nice. Ni far from nice and nice from far. <laughs> yes, we know that. <laughs> I had a girlfriend <laughs> like that once. <laughs> I, I, I hope <laughs> we managed to convince him not yeah. to buy this uh, Magnite. Well, I, hope he, get it up. I well, hope he hasn't changed his Toyota we, already. We, we're in oh. trouble. <laughs> and finally, here's a question from Frick, who lives in Germiston and drives a 2011 Mazda 2 1.3 Active, which has covered only 73,000 kilometers and has a full service history with the agents. The car has served him very well, but recently on cold starts, he's noticed a slight vibration on the steering. And upon inspection, it turns out that the top engine mounting is failing and needs to be replaced at a cost of plus minus 1,800 Rand. But that's not all. The steering shaft just behind the steering wheel also needs replacing at 6,500 Rand. He would like to know if it's common for these components to fail on a vehicle with such low mileage. Well, I'll jump in here and say the mounting is one of those things that does fail. And a lot of the problems we find with engine mountings, how many speed bumps do you guys drive over every day? A lot. A lot. lot. And potholes. And, and potholes. potholes. Yeah. So what actually happens is your engine sits on, on hydraulic mountings and it does this. You go over a speed bump and it goes, whoop, bang. And that's what breaks those mountings all the time. So that's why Adam's really suspension is like really yeah. it's so yeah. it's so damaged. It's one of those things that that'll fail. In terms of the steering column, that is a very uncommon uh, problem with those cars. I would have a second opinion there. I don't think it's an issue. There are alternative parts for those Mazdas in the mountings. You could most probably get one a little bit cheaper if you want to save costs. The Mazda 2 is a very, very good, reliable car. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about anything else going wrong. Have a second opinion on that steering. A steering, yeah, that column. Yeah. That I don't, I've never heard of that. I've done tons of those. Never, never heard, heard of that steering. Yeah. Column yeah, it's a very behind. good car. Yeah, yeah. 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 great cars. Yeah. Very reliable. I'm sure you'd love those on your second hand oh, stand. No, yeah, that sort of year with that sort of mileage, it's they a hot seller. Yeah, they no, yeah, the engine doesn't even have time to cool down. That's it. Um, yeah. So I definitely wouldn't get rid of it. Um, and yeah, the service costs shouldn't be too bad. Oh, they're cheap. Cheapest yeah. chips to service. Yep. I assume, Doctor, you concur. I do. I do indeed. So I suppose we've got to consider that this little Mazda is 10 years old, and certain components, like the, like the rubber mountings, will deteriorate with age. I mean, it's done seven, what is it, 7,000 k's a year, very low mileage. So I suppose 10 years, if that's what you've got to spend on a car, it's not a lot. Most divided, people will be happy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. So you divide it 180 rand a year. Yeah. You, uh, you drink more than that on a weekend. Well, if I drink, I would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you go. Keep the car. And, you know, don't worry about these little things. Every car needs its odd bit of maintenance here and there. Unfortunately, with that, we've come to the end of this week's episode. Thank you, Bradley. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Thomas. You're welcome. Great to have you guys here and yeah. your useful advice and tips that you always give our viewers. And remember, if you're in the market for a newer used vehicle, whether it be a mid-sized SUV, executive sedan, or a double cab bucky, visit changecars.co.za to see if they can beat your quote. Please join us again next week when the Land Rover Freelander 2 comes under the spotlight. The Hyundai Santa Fe goes up against its cousin, the Kia Sorento. And we find out what you should look out for when shopping for a used Opel Astra. Until next time, remember to check those tire pressures. And please, guys, keep left and pass right. Buyer's Guide was brought to you by Change Cars. The platform where only manufacturer-approved dealers are allowed to advertise. <laughs>